James II and Severn was King of England and Ireland as James II and King of Scotland as James VII, from 6 February 1685 until he was deposed in the Glorious Revolution of 1688. He was the last Roman Catholic monarch to reign over the kingdoms of England, Scotland and Ireland. The second surviving son of Charles I, he ascended the throne upon the death of his brother, Charles II. Members of Britain's Protestant political elite increasingly suspected him of being pro-French and pro-Catholic and of having designs on becoming an absolute monarch. When he produced a Catholic heir, the tension exploded, and leading nobles called on his Protestant son-in-law and nephew William of Orange to land an invasion army from the Netherlands, which he did in the Glorious Revolution of 1688. James fled England. He was replaced by his eldest Protestant daughter Mary and her husband William of Orange. James made one serious attempt to recover his crowns from William and Mary when he landed in Ireland in 1689, after the defeat of the Jacobite forces by the Williamites at the Battle of the Boyne in July 1690, James returned to France. He lived out the rest of his life as a pretender at a court sponsored by his cousin and ally, King Louis XIV. James is best known for his struggles with the English Parliament and his attempts to create religious liberty for English Roman Catholics and Protestant nonconformists against the wishes of the Anglican establishment. However, he also continued the persecution of the Presbyterian Covenanters in Scotland, Parliament, opposed to the growth of absolutism that was occurring in other European countries as well as to the loss of legal supremacy of the Church of England, saw their opposition as a way to preserve what they regarded as traditional English liberties. This tension made James's four-year reign a struggle for supremacy between the English Parliament and the Crown, resulting in his deposition, the passage of the Bill of Rights, and the Hanoverian succession. Early life Birth James, the second surviving son of Charles I and Henrietta Maria of France, was born at St. James's Palace in London on 14 October 1633. Later that same year, James was baptised by William Lord, the Anglican Archbishop of Canterbury. James was educated by tutors, along with his brother, the future King Charles II, and the two sons of the Duke of Buckingham. George and Francis Villiers. At the age of three, James was appointed Lord High Admiral. The position was initially honorary, but would become a substantive office after the Restoration, when James was an adult. Civil War James was invested with the Order of the Garter in 1642, and created Duke of York on the 22nd of January 1644. As the King's disputes with the English Parliament grew into the English Civil War, James stayed in Oxford, a royalist stronghold. When the city surrendered after the Siege of Oxford in 1646, parliamentary leaders ordered the Duke of York to be confined in St. James's Palace. In 1648, he escaped from the palace, aided by Joseph Bampfield, and from there he went to the Hague in disguise. When Charles I was executed by the rebels in 1649, monarchists proclaimed James's older brother as Charles II of England. Although he was proclaimed king in Jersey, Charles was unable to secure the crown of England and consequently fled to France in exile. Exile in France Like his brother, James sought refuge in France, serving in the French army under Turenne against the Fronde, and later against their Spanish allies. In the French army James had his first true experience of battle where, according to one observer, he ventures himself and chargeth gallantly where anything is to be done. In 1656, when his brother Charles entered into an alliance with Spain, an enemy of France, James was expelled from France and forced to leave Turenne's army. James quarreled with his brother over the diplomatic choice of Spain over France. 
exiled and poor, there was little that either Charles or James could do about the wider political situation, and James ultimately travelled to Bruges and joined the Spanish army under Louis, Prince of Condé, fighting against his former French comrades at the Battle of the Dunes. During his service in the Spanish army, James became friendly with two Irish Catholic brothers in the royalist entourage Peter and Richard Talbot, and became somewhat estranged from his brother's Anglican advisers. In 1659, the French and Spanish made peace. James, doubtful of his brother's chances of regaining the throne, considered taking a Spanish offer to be an admiral in their navy. Ultimately, he declined the position. By the next year the situation in England had changed, and Charles II was proclaimed king. Restoration First marriage after Richard Cromwell's resignation as Lord Protector in 1659 and the subsequent collapse of the Commonwealth in 1660. Charles II was restored to the English throne. Although James was the heir presumptive, it seemed unlikely that he would inherit the crown, as Charles was still a young man capable of fathering children. On 31 December 1660, following his brother's restoration, James was created Duke of Albany in Scotland to go along with his English title, Duke of York. Upon his return to England, James prompted an immediate controversy by announcing his engagement to Anne Hyde, the daughter of Charles's chief minister, Edward Hyde. In 1659, while trying to seduce her, James promised he would marry Anne. Anne became pregnant in 1660, but following the restoration and James's return to power, no one at the royal court expected a prince to marry a commoner, no matter what he had pledged beforehand, although nearly everyone, including Anne's father, urged the two not to marry, the couple married secretly then went through an official marriage ceremony on 3 September 1660 in London. Their first child, Charles, was born less than two months later, but died in infancy, as did five further sons and daughters. Only two daughters survived, Mary and Anne. Samuel Pepys wrote that James was fond of his children and his role as a father, and played with them, like an ordinary private father of a child. A contrast to the distant parenting common to royals at the time, James's wife was devoted to him and influenced many of his decisions. Even so, he kept a variety of mistresses, including Arabella Churchill and Catherine Sedley and was reputed to be the most unguarded ogler of his time. With Catherine Sedley, James II had a daughter, Catherine Darnley. Anne Hyde died in 1671. Military and political offices after the Restoration, James was confirmed as Lord High Admiral, an office that carried with it the subsidiary appointments of Governor of Portsmouth and Lord Warden of the Singh Ports. James commanded the Royal Navy during the Second and Third Anglo-Dutch Wars. Following the raid on the Medway in 1667, James oversaw the survey and re-fortification of the southern coast. The office of Lord High Admiral, combined with his revenue from post office and wine tariffs gave James enough money to keep a sizable court household. In 1664, Charles granted American territory between the Delaware and Connecticut rivers to James. Following its capture by the English the former Dutch territory of New Netherland and its principal port, New Amsterdam, were named the province and city of New York in James's honor. After the founding, the Duke gave part of the colony to proprietors George Carteret and John Berkeley. Fort Orange, 240 kilometers north on the Hudson River, was renamed Albany after James's Scottish title. In 1683, he became the governor of the Hudson's Bay Company, but did not take an active role in its governance. James also headed the Royal African Company, a slave trading company. In September 1666, his brother Charles put him in charge of firefighting operations in the Great Fire of London. In the absence of action by Lord Mayor Thomas Bloodworth, this was not a political office, but his actions and leadership were noteworthy. The Duke of York hath won the hearts of the people with his continual and indefatigable pains day and night in helping to quench the fire, wrote a witness in a letter on 8 September. 
conversion to Roman Catholicism and second marriage James's time in France had exposed him to the beliefs and ceremonies of Catholicism. He and his wife, Anne, became drawn to that faith. James took Eucharist in the Roman Catholic Church in 1668 or 1669. Although his conversion was kept secret for some time and he continued to attend Anglican services until 1676. In spite of his conversion, James continued to associate primarily with Anglicans, including John Churchill and George Legg, as well as French Protestants, such as Louis de Doras, the Earl of Feversham. Growing fears of Catholic influence at court led the English Parliament to introduce a new Test Act in 1673. Under this Act, all civil and military officials were required to take an oath and to receive the Eucharist under the auspices of the Church of England. James refused to perform either action, instead choosing to relinquish the post of Lord High Admiral. His conversion to Catholicism was thereby made public. Charles II opposed the conversion, ordering that James's daughters, Mary and Anne, be raised as Protestants. Nevertheless, he allowed James to marry the Catholic Mary of Modena, a 15-year-old Italian princess. James and Mary were married by proxy in a Catholic ceremony on 20 September 1673. On 21 November, Mary arrived in England and Nathaniel Crewe, Bishop of Oxford, performed a brief Anglican service that did little more than recognize the Catholic marriage. Many British people, distrustful of Catholicism, regarded the new Duchess of York as an agent of the Pope. The King was noted for his devotion. He once said, if occasion were, I hope God would give me his grace to suffer death for the true Catholic religion as well as banishment, exclusion crisis in 1677. James reluctantly consented to his daughter Mary's marriage to the Protestant William of Orange, acquiescing after his brother Charles and William had agreed upon the marriage. Despite the Protestant marriage, fears of a potential Catholic monarch persisted, intensified by the failure of Charles II and his wife, Catherine of Braganza, to produce any children. A defrocked Anglican clergyman, Titus Oates, spoke of a popish plot to kill Charles and to put the Duke of York on the throne. The fabricated plot caused a wave of anti-Catholic hysteria to sweep across the nation. In England, the Earl of Shaftesbury, a former government minister and now a leading opponent of Catholicism, attempted to have James excluded from the line of succession. Some members of Parliament even proposed that the crown go to Charles's illegitimate son, James Scott, 1st Duke of Monmouth. In 1679, with the Exclusion Bill in danger of passing, Charles II dissolved Parliament. Two further parliaments were elected in 1680 and 1681, but were dissolved for the same reason. The exclusion crisis contributed to the development of the English two-party system. The Whigs were those who supported the bill, while the Tories were those who opposed it. Ultimately, the succession was not altered, but James was convinced to withdraw from all policy-making bodies and to accept a lesser role in his brother's government. On the orders of the king, James left England for Brussels. In 1680, he was appointed Lord High Commissioner of Scotland and took up residence at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh to suppress an uprising in oversee royal government. James returned to England for a time when Charles was stricken ill and appeared to be near death. The hysteria of the accusations eventually faded, but James's relations with many in the English Parliament, including the Earl of Danby, a former ally, were forever strained and a solid segment turned against him. Return to favour in 1683, a plot was uncovered to assassinate Charles and James and spark a Republican revolution to re-establish a government of the Cromwellian style. The conspiracy, known as the Rye House Plot, backfired upon its conspirators and provoked a wave of sympathy for the King and James. 
Several notable Whigs, including the Earl of Essex and the King's illegitimate son, the Duke of Monmouth, were implicated. Monmouth initially confessed to complicity in the plot, implicating fellow plotters, but later recanted. Essex committed suicide and Monmouth, along with several others, was obliged to flee into continental exile. Charles reacted to the plot by increasing repression of Whigs and dissenters. Taking advantage of James's rebounding popularity, Charles invited him back onto the Privy Council in 1684. While some in the English Parliament remained wary of the possibility of a Catholic king, the threat of excluding James from the throne had passed.